Welcome to the presentation, The Art of Correction, Book 3938 AP. My name is Judith Ebert, and I have the pleasure today to guide you through this important topic. Powder coatings are my daily business as laboratory manager at Book and the technical service department specialized for powder coating. Working with this technology for the last 13 years, I understand how challenging it is to do any corrections in a finished good. The obvious target in production is to produce material within specification. To achieve this, a lot of actions are implemented. Machines are optimized, a precise process control is in place, good employees are hired, the formulation is designed robust, a good and consistent quality of raw materials is ensured. But apart of all of this effort, the, the highly complex coating system always shows deviations. High quality requests combined with time pressure and high demands trouble any manufacturing site. Especially lately, the shortages of raw materials and their desired quality intensifies this challenge. As a result, some of the batches will be out of specification and need to be dealt with. The list of issues out of specification material creates is long. A reduction of price might be needed. Also, material might need to be reworked, which increases the cost of the material. If the deviation is too high, even recycling might be needed. In any case, storing costs will rise. A different buyer might need to be found, and also a rework is only possible in small percentages. To summarize, out of specification material creates waste and will cause economical loss. The possibility of correction in powder coatings is even more limited than in liquid coatings. Finished powder coatings can just be dry blended and there is no sufficient homogenization or any additional dispersing possible at that point. An addition of any kind that is added into the powder coating faces the high viscosity during film formation and the low mobility within the, within the film. This makes corrections nearly impossible in powder coatings. With BIC 3938P, BIC offers now the exception to this rule. On this slide, you see the gloss development in an HAA system depending on the dosage of BIC 3938P. This high gloss formulation starts at a gloss level of 98 units, how you can see on the left at a 60 angle. The stepwise addition of BIC 3938P leads to a linear gloss reduction in a stable and predictable way. Book 3938P can be used throughout the, the whole gloss range. It does not matter if the gloss should be co corrected from 70 units down to 60 or at a lower gloss range from 60 to 50 units. Now let us take it one step back and focus on how to master the art of correction. Let us explore which challenges arise in correction and how Book 3938P copes with them. Incorporation in a finished powder coating is challenging. It is just possible to dry blood. So one powder coating into another powder coating or an additional additive into the powder coating. In each case, there is no additional dispersing and no real homogeneity can be achieved. This leads to the danger of surface tension differences, which may cause craters and defects later on in the curing process. Book 3938B is designed to avoid this issue. It is compatible to the resin system and is inert with no influence on the surface tension. It will not create craters. The gloss correction has a target to achieve a homogeneous impression to the eye. This is very challenging in powder coatings. In extreme, the problem can be seen as a salt and pepper effect. So mixing a white powder with a black powder. In a liquid coating, just the color shade would change a little bit. Instead, in powder coating, the single particles are visible next to each other in the cured foam, as you can see on the picture on the left, as well as symbolized in the drawing. In case of gloss differences, we can see, we can see a sparkle effect. Microscopic, a dull spot is next to a glossy spot. Macroscopic, an uneven surface results. In the middle picture, it is shown in a clear coat which was placed over a contrast card. The resulting surface appears hazy. Book 3938P orientates itself to the surface. 
It is evenly distributed on the whole surface and by this prevents the sparkle effect. So the matting achieves a homogeneous impression to the eye. The effect of correction has to be stable. In the case of correction with waxes, this is very challenging. In general, micronized waxes can be distributed evenly by dry blending through the coating. They orientate themselves to the surface. They reduce the gloss by building a thin wax layer on the surface. But this blooming effect is not stable. The thin wax layer can be removed by wiping and resulting in the higher gloss after the wiping. On the picture, a black coating is just wiped in the bottom area and the gloss is changed. A distinct line is visible between the areas on the top and at the bottom. Book 3938P orientates itself to the surface is and is embedded in the breadth and matrix. Wiping and polishing will not interfere with the gloss reduction. The effect is stable. On the right, this effect is shown in gloss measurement. The black coating was cleaned in the middle with a leather towel and on the right columns with, the, with isopropanol. The blue columns show Book 3938P with no differences before and after wiping while the orange columns with the wax show a difference before and after the wiping. The matching effect is not stable. Reactive ingredients also might be considered to use for correction, but the addition can be interfere with the total reactivity of the paint system, as well as with the curing reaction. This is problematic because the powder coating specified to the customer with a certain curing window, so time versus temperature. A corrective ingredient should never change the specified parameters. With Book 3938P, this is not an issue. Book 3938P is chemical inert and functions by a physical mechanism. It does not interfere with the reactivity of the paint system. Additional, the matting effect is independent from the curing temperature. This can be seen in the diagram over here. The achieved gloss level, no matter which dosage of Book 3938P is used, is the same by curing at 160 Celsius on the left or at 120 Celsius on the right. Always the same gloss level is achieved. Powder coatings are offered in high quantities and light color shades. The curing at elevated temperatures may cause yellowing, which is especially visible in the light colors. A corrective ingredient should never lead to any yellowing. Book 3938P by itself, it seeds a seed stable and does not lead to yellowing even in a white formulation. This can be seen in the diagram on the right, where the B values are shown for a regular cured panel in the dark blue columns and then for the overstow panel in the light blue columns. Book 3938P does not increase the value for compared to the control. Smooth leveling and powder coating is a quality characteristic. Adding anything into a powder coating is very challenging. Differences in polarity, viscosity, or the addition of particle needs to be absorbed by the system without causing the orange peel. Also, Book 3938P is considered an additional particle, but the surface is treated to allow the movement through the coating to the surface as well as the wetting of the particle surface by the paint matrix. Nevertheless, a proper incorporation is needed to support the wetting and a good flow. On the left, we see here a poor incorporation of the additive. A bad leveling and defects will result. While on the other hand, on the right, we see a proper incorporation, providing a nice gloss reduction with a smooth leveling as well as free of defects. The needed incorporation energy is about the same as with an effect pink bag. As always evolving topic, the chemical classification by DHS and the necessity of labeling is a high concern to any powder coating. In general, powder coatings are free of labeling. The addition of a corrective additive should not change this. Typical matting hardeners contain restricted ing ingredients. Book 3938P, on the other hand, is, according to Reach and Orsha, not a hazardous substance or mixture. It is free of label by itself and it does not cause any labeling of the finished powder coating. As industry standard, matting is on the one hand achieved with the chemical reaction of matting agents with epoxy groups of a resin. Therefore, the epoxy 
component needs to be increased within the formulation. This makes it depending on the resin choice. It is not suitable in all systems. Additional matting agents are also need to be executed to function well. On the other hand, matting is also achieved by dry blending of coatings with different reactivities. They request a very fine adjustment of the coatings to each other to create a smooth finish. Both approaches are not suitable for corrections. Big 3938P is independent from the resin type as well as from the formulation. Hybrid and epoxy systems are matted as well as HIA systems or TGIC. There is no adjustment needed in the finished formulation. Big 3938P can be added on demand even when quality controls find a deviation in gloss. We discussed numerous aspects to consider during correction. This variety of obvious and hidden challenges makes it an art to correct sufficient without creating new issues. We explored how Book 3938P allows correction with easy rework process to avoid waste while achieving labor-free material of the same high quality. Book 3938P brings material within specification. Thank you very much for your attention.